Well, broadband and smartphone ownership are both set to expand substantially in the coming years, according to Ericsson. Pim Santos tells us what this means for small businesses in the Philippines. Telco equipment company Ericsson says mobile broadband penetration is set to grow tremendously in the coming years, with subscriptions expected to exceed the number of Filipinos in the country in five years. From 50% last year, Ericsson estimates mobile broadband subscriptions to hit 120% by 2021. Smartphone ownership is also seen more than doubling from 40 million last year to 90 million by 2021. Ericsson country manager for the Philippines, Shan Goran, says Growth will be driven by the country's young population and huge pent-up demand in unserved areas. The Philippines is a very young and vibrant economy and, and the youth segment is something to be really studied closely in the Philippines for, for growth. It's a challenging environment in the Philippines. We have uh, many, many islands. We have uh, many pockets of, of low penetration we have, or low um, uh, population coverage. We have some massive metros with huge population in small areas. So it, it requires a significant uh, investment to cover all of these people. PLDT has allotted 43 billion pesos in capital expenditures this year, while rival Globe Telecom has earmarked roughly 35 billion. Goran says these investments should easily translate to improved network service. Even if many people like to complain about the state of internet in the Philippines, the investments are quite high. And, and from what we can see, that will continue. Uh, with more spectrum available, with new technologies available, and uh, in, in ongoing competition between the two players, we will see continued investment, we will see continued improvements. On average, 30% um, of revenue being reinvested in capital expenditure, that's on the high side. Mm -hmm. We can't expect that to continue forever. Global average is closer to 20, 21-22%. So probably uh, we can see that at some point in time, the operators in Philippines will move closer to global average in, in the lower 20s. And as mobile broadband reach continues to expand, e-commerce is also slated to grow. But today, only a handful of SMEs use e-commerce, which corners less than a percent of total retail sales in the country. Union Bank recently put up a consortium called Eureka to evangelize the benefits of online business to small enterprises. Union Bank says it embarked on this program not only for SMEs, but for the entire country. If they don't embrace e-commerce, it will be very difficult for our country to be able to take advantage of the opportunities of e-commerce, uh, being able to do business 24 by 7, being able to go borderless. Lopez points out growth areas such as Mindanao have a lot to benefit from peddling their products and services online. Mindanao has actually a little bit of everything, and in that case, in that sense, it can really be a uh, a unique uh, hub of a great variety of e-commerce businesses, whether it's actually products or services. PLDT likewise says a cursory observation of consumer shopping behavior already shows the vast potential of online commerce. You get to see that the trends is really growing by double digit. Even when you're going shopping, people are actually still in their phones checking the best deals or the looks before they actually make a purchase. So with that, we see the trend, um, the adoption of e-commerce for the micro, small and medium enterprises to grow as well, double digit, for at least the next three years. Today, online shopping in the Philippines is primarily cornered by large tech companies. The challenge ahead for the industry will be how to empower small enterprises to hop on the online bandwagon and help them reap the benefits of modern connectivity. Bim Santos, Bloomberg TV, Philippines.